A very good morning to all my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good. Welcome to Study IQ and let's see what we have got in the Hindu today. But before that, time management mistakes. Very important for you guys to understand this thing because your exam is not far now. You need to manage your time. Make sure you have a to-do list because uh, when you prepare a to-do list, basically you are telling your mind that these are the things that you are going to do it today. Uh, also set your personal goals, right? And the thing is, uh, if you are not used to with it, then it will take a bit of time. Uh, in starting days, you may not achieve your 100% target. But even if you are achieving, say, for example, 50% or 40%, then this is better than what you used to achieve earlier on. Because without a plan, without a proper schedule, uh, our time basically is, generally speaking, wasted. Set your priorities as well. Uh, prepare yourself for multitasking and one of the most important thing is taking breaks right do take breaks but make sure that uh, generally what happens is we have a start time for our break but we don't have a, a stop time for our break so your breaks as well should be scheduled i hope this will help you with uh, a few months that you have got in your hand and let's see what we have got in the editorial and op-ed page many articles to go through this one is about uh, high hopes uh, air india this one is about Egypt and uh, here you find a rude wake-up call. This is about impeachment, judiciary, the things that are required or changes that are necessary for, for maintaining the independence of our judiciary. And here you find this article called Politics in the Age of Facebook. Now, let me throw some light on this one. See, we have discussed about Facebook many a times now, uh, this Cambridge Analytica issue and Facebook's involvement in it and things like that. We have talked about this psychological uh, tactics that are used by these companies nowadays uh, to target people and uh, this is a very serious thing because what happens is that they can influence the outcome of an election as well. They can, this sort of things can hamper uh, a democracy or a democratic setup of any country or any society. So it is a bit dangerous, this thing. But uh, one thing we discussed last time was that uh, this is something that is not going to stop here. There are going to be many countries or many companies that will try this thing because, uh, you know, for, for winning election, there are political parties in our country as well as in different parts of the world. They will do everything possible, right? Uh, many a times, even things that are, you cannot say they are ethical or legal. So this is the, the things that are discussed in this article. We have already discussed it many a times. It is going to be a very easy read for you guys. This one here is about crime and punishment. It is basically about this bold tempering case. Now, before I throw some more light on this bold tempering case, let me tell you that a special video lecture on this uh, uh, Facebook and Cambridge Analytica is available on our YouTube channel. Dr. Gaurav Garg uh, came out with a very thorough analysis on how things uh, used to work or how what were the things or steps taken by this facebook and cambridge analytica and other things and here you have this ball tempering again special video lecture is available what here you find in this article is uh, it is basically talking about that this ipl is an entertainment game so this players of australia they are barred for uh, from playing test uh, uh, test by ICC that is International Cricket and uh, Cricket Australia that is Australian Cricket Board they have banned this three players as well for for period of two years or something but the most important thing that you can take away from this article is that ethics right uh, observe this whole issue these players were playing for one of the most reputed cricket team in the world. Uh, in terms of money, they were having everything possible. I believe that 99% of human beings might have not enjoyed the life these players are enjoying or any these famous celebrities are enjoying, isn't it? They have everything they need, fame, money, uh, good life, good health, everything. But then as well, you find that the greed is something if you are, if you are not uh, checking your greed, then you may end up in this sort of situation. This may help you with your paper for this uh, ethics and other things so it's not necessary that once you are at a top position then you are immune to all this greed and other things you find many this type of cases as well now this one is about as i've already told you this is about this impeachment and here is a sort of gist or you can say an excerpt from a book 
a recently released book by a diplomat, a former diplomat of Pakistan. He is talking about Pakistan and what are the things that Pakistan should do. So let's move on and let's go through all of them in detail. Now, before moving ahead, this is my Facebook page from where you can download PDF of this lecture, right? Uh, and uh, tomorrow I will share my Twitter handle as well from where you can uh, download this PDF just in case if you are on Twitter and not on Facebook. Apart from that, our official Telegram channel description in the description of this video, you will find a link of Study IQ's Telegram channel from where you can download the PDF too. With this, dear friends, uh, Study IQ's pen drive and tablet courses are available. Your exams are not far. And this pen drive and tablet courses, say for example, for UPSC, right? We have covered all these important subjects for you and they will help you immensely. All our pen drive and tablet courses are designed by the best faculties of our country. Now, let's start with this uh, judiciary or this uh, article that is pertaining to judiciary. Now, let's uh, read this sentence here. A fearless judge is the bedrock of an independent judiciary. Very right, isn't it? Without if a judge is favoring a particular party or if a judge is having uh, some sort of fear, then you can naturally understand that that person won't be able to deliver proper justice. And independent judiciary itself is the foundation on which the rule of laws rest. If judiciary is not independent, it is, if it is dependent or if it is not free, then it will have a direct impact on rules and regulation and this will destroy the whole democracy of any country or any society. The other thing is, in our country, we call our judiciary as the one of the basic pillar of our democracy. So in this term, I'm, I'm sure every one of us is on the same page when we say that we need fearless judges as well as we need an independent judiciary. Of course, we will expect a bit of transparency from judiciary when it comes to appointment of judges and other things. Now, uh, as far as appointment and removals are concerned, right, uh, there is a fixity of tenure. And uh, removal can be done only by impeachment process. So far, no judges, right? Uh, not even a single judge has been impeached. We have seen many cases where uh, judges were knowing that they are going to be impeached. So they have resigned before this uh, completion of this impeachment process. But so far, we haven't seen this thing. And this impeachment process is a bit lengthy one as well. Then you have to go through many procedures before uh, this whole impeachment process can get over. And this guarantees independence so a judge can can act fearlessly right uh, this is one of the main you can say main reason for this uh, lengthy or you can say a bit difficult impeachment process and then you have this fixity of train a uh, tenure as well so you cannot remove a judge uh, by your own pleasure you know a, a president or prime minister they cannot remove a judge in our judiciary uh, just by saying that they remove them or by issuing a letter. No, you have to go through this impeachment process. Now, the reason why we are discussing this particular article in detail is because recently there is a proposed resolution uh, for impeachment of Chief Justice of India, right? Uh, impeachment process, a proposed resolution for impeaching Chief Justice of India. And this is a matter of grave uh, concern because the thing is that today we are living in a perception driven world news you know and news with views they spread very rapidly and once you have say for example if chief current chief justice of india if this impeachment process is just started then you can imagine that uh, this will shake the trust of people in judiciary even if later on if we find that uh, this current cji is innocent then as well it will take a toll on his image and image on the whole judiciary the other thing is that we have a defined process under this article 124 subsection 4 and then you have this judges inquiry act as well but we need to change the way things are going on in this procedure because what happens is that this whole process is started by by you can say legislatures or executives right they the legislatures basically they can start this whole process and this is the main problem here because if legislatures are if they are starting this whole process then you will find many this type of impeachment process and this is one of the reason why we find this resolution this proposed resolution because it can be easily started by a group of legislatures now what are the things that we need to change first of all before starting this sort of motion 
right there should be a green signal what we can do is that the presiding officer in the parliament either rajya sabha chairman or lok sabha speaker they should first of all get a green signal from a full court of supreme court uh, full court of the supreme court means all the judges or main judges or collegium should give a green signal to start this process now just in case say for example in this example we can take this case like the chief justice of india and a motion has been or not motion but a resolution has just started about or, or against the cji so cji should be should not be there when this supreme court or this full court is uh, is deciding whether whether they should give a green signal or not to this presiding officer so this is something that we can understand because uh, you never know many a times we find that uh, judges are involved in this sort of things so recently high court judges were were in were involved in some sort of wrongdoings remember this case uh, of uh, the supreme court taking a tough stand against this judges and i think he was from andhra pradesh or telangana can't remember the state but uh, it's not that old issue maybe a couple of months ago uh, this thing was in news maybe 3 or 4 months ago so if a judge uh, is or against a particular judge say for example x uh, if something is going against him then that person should not be there or should not participate in this committee that is going to decide whether this this permission should be given to this legislature or not the other thing is that there should be a fixed timeline as well four weeks timeline so within this four week if nothing is heard from supreme court then this can be taken by the presiding officer in the parliament that uh, we can or this can be considered as a deemed concurrence and uh, without a green signal again this whole process should be made void as well because it's about independence of judiciary and if we are going to have a weak system or if this sort of things can be started by legislature then it will weaken our whole judiciary if we go through this second judges case then we find that power to appoint judges of the higher judiciary is vested in apex court basically collegium right when it comes to supreme court and higher court judges so collegium is the main body and it is part of this judiciary and this will this ensures that judiciary is independent now when you are given with the power to hire then you should be the one who should have the power to fire as well so when it comes to hiring and firing right it should be this apex body this apex court that should decide not uh, this uh, it should not be started by this legislatures and this will ensure independence of judiciary apart from that uh, one more thing can be argued that uh, when this judges if they will find a black sheep within them if a person is doing something wrong if that person is a judge then other judges or this whole peer group will do everything possible to ensure that this person is behind the bar but if someone is unfairly targeted then all of them can provide a safeguard to that particular judge as well because again remember we are living in a perception driven world there are many problems that we are seeing at present and for that we have to work together this all three branches executive legislature and judiciary should work together and should sort out all the problems that we find in our judiciary say for example at present we know that there are crores and crores of cases that are pending vacancies are there in our all different levels right in supreme court in higher courts and in lower courts as well we know there are huge amount of vacancies and this is something because of vacancies you have many pending cases and uh, there are other procedures as well that needs to be sorted out and this can be done by the government like say for example repeated adjournments and other things there are some outdated laws that are still applicable here this can be sorted out by the government so this things uh, will improve uh, delivery mechanism this whole justice delivery mechanism will improve apart from that uh, the faith of people should not uh, be lost right on judiciary even today you know that it will take a bit of time but then as well people in our country we have a full faith in our judiciary and this is a big responsibility on judges as well so we need fearless judges as well as independent judiciary and it's not just about justice it's it 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 impacts our whole economy we were talking about ease of doing business and remember that if uh, someone is investing in our country and if just in case if anything goes wrong in terms of contract and if it is going to take ages 
on an average five years for you to come to a conclusion then this is not going to be practical for business so good judiciary good delivery of justice system will uh, improve our business environment uh, tourism many a times we find find crimes against uh, our tourists we are promoting our tourism sector for that as well in terms of society you see many goons uh, they are misbehaving or they are becoming super muscle power because they know that it will take ages in a judicial system to come to a conclusion and in terms of international community as well if our judiciary is is not performing that well then our the image of our country will be in bad light as well so these are the things now moving on to another item it is about high hopes the name of this editorial is high hopes and nine months ago our union cabinet gave a green signal or a node for offloading this government's stake in Air India basically you know that government owes this company so now government wants to sell it or sell say for example 76 percent right uh, this is this is something that was decided uh, nine months ago that 76 percent of uh, share of Air India will be sold to private uh, private player and this basically means that government uh, wants private players uh, to take over this Air India. It has also decided that 100% stake will be offered to the subsidiary Air India Express. 50% stake will be offered in this ground handling operation arms. And uh, when you have this private management, when private management will uh, take over or control this Air India, then of course we will see a new change management here, right? Uh, we know it very well the way uh, private companies uh, work and the way uh, private uh, this public companies i'll give you just one example of banks right uh, recently we saw this 31st march and all the banks of course every business uh, will be busy in sorting out their books because this financial year is closing down but if you go to private banks uh, their services are not affected to that extent but if you go to public banks what you find is that at 3 p.m. they will close down their shutters they will close down their doors uh, for any transaction for or any business and this is something that is done uh, if I'm not wrong unofficially right uh, they persuade or they will inform you that uh, they are doing this close down year end is just last week for this year end so they are sorting out their books and things like that but there are many big companies in our country right private companies they are bigger than many banks of our country, uh, public banks of our country, and they don't shut down their operations. So this is just one example of inefficiency. So this is the thing when private players will handle this thing, then Air India, you won't find rats and other things in a flight. These are the things, mosquitoes and other things you find. Many a times, this sort of articles, you will find many things on Air India. Uh, bad food other old lacks uh, not that good services and you know it is getting more and more competitive now it's not just about about flying it is more about hospitality as well that is missing at present in air india now air india is remember having this debt burden of 33000 crore rupees so you are paying that much amount of interest as well on this debt so whatever profit you make you have to cover up this interest that you will pay and then one day you have to sort out this debt as well so you have to walk that extra mile now this is something that will be considered by this private players when this bidding process will start and it is believed that because of this uh, high depth and there are many other things that you have to sort out uh, the, the money that government or this bid is going to be bit low or this bidders they are going for or they will go for a low bid now it's not all bad uh, there are some strengths as well uh, in in air india's arms you have this uh, international flying rights are there with this air india and some prime slots are are been given to this air india so this are you can say they these things are this international flying rights and slots are its strengths and then you have some negative sides as well now when you are giving away 76 percent when I say I'm giving away, I'm basically saying that when you are making this space and when government is deciding that it will keep this just what 24%, then we have to keep this thing in mind that you will have a couple of bureaucrats uh, that will be part of your decision making team. Of course, uh, the main decision will be taken by 
this private company but then as well you will find a bit of touch of bureaucracy over here so this is something that will be uh, not taken very well by uh, by this private players apart from that uh, high interest cost i already told you about it operational inefficiency and poor management these are the things that are uh, very bad or these are the things that are a uh, big weakness of air india now the other thing is that government what government has decided that once uh, things will be sorted out by new private players uh, they will uh, get rid of this 24 percent later on once the position of air india is a bit higher so that they can get some extra money in their pocket but uh, real benefit of privatization the biggest benefit as uh, as uh, means for the whole country is that uh, we won't see this taxpayers fund uh, will be given to this air india and this is this is the thing that is that has been going on for a very long period of time moving on to another editorial it is about egypt but before that let's go through some important uh, bits and pieces uh, associated with egypt you can see here mediterranean sea northern side of egypt you have mediterranean sea then you have this cairo is its capital very important red sea over here which connects uh, uh, arabian sea from gulf of aden you uh, you can enter arabian sea from red sea then you have this gulf of suez and suez canal you have this mouth of nile over here and then you have some other important cities you have this uh, uh, sinai desert uh, is over here a couple of mountains here and then you can go through this countries through which with which uh, egypt is sharing its border just to spend couple of minutes after it maybe five minutes after after this map and you will see that deserts are here you have black desert and you have eastern desert uh, tropic of cancer uh, yes tropic of cancer 23.5 degree north is also passing from uh, this country called egypt uh, egypt you know it is uh, an old civilization uh, pyramids and mummies and other things are well famous of egypt it is it used to be a very big uh, tourist destination at present as well there are millions and millions of people who visit egypt for pyramid and other things but in terms of because of this political instability economy and other things this tourism has also dropped down now this editorial is more about this political instability that used to be there at present you have this person here on your screen he used to be uh, a sort of chief you can say army chief uh, in egypt but now he is the president his name is abdul abdul fateh al sisi his name generally said al sisi so al sisi here he is the president and uh, elections were there in egypt and uh, there was no struggle uh, for al sisi to secure a second term now this election remember it is a democratic country but elections are not as clean as we find here in our country they are called democratic just for a name's sake uh, back in 2011 this person used to rule egypt for nearly 30 years his name is uh, hosni mubarak and uh, then we had this uh, arab uprising in 2011 this cairo's Ta Ta uh, tahrir square many people died people were protesting and things like that because there are many problems uh, age old problems like economic hardship and political repressions and other things and you can imagine when you have a person who is there for 30 years as your president basically it's not democratic it is more called of uh, dictatorship uh, that under which you are living over there so this was something that was there and later on we had this uh, person his name is uh, Muhammad Mursi both of them this one and this one both of them were uh, tried by the court and uh, at present al Sisi is is basically proving a sort of stable government uh, the thing is uh, al sisi has a sort of uh, you can say fan base or there are people who are who are supporting al sisi um, society there are many people in society of egypt they are supporting al sisi and the reason why they are supporting they know that he is not that democratic but at present they want a stable country they don't want this political uprising here and there they don't want people getting killed uh, they want a bit of stability and this is something that is offered by al sisi now still al sisi has to keep this thing in mind that uh, conditions that used to be there before 2011 are still there you have economic hardship you have this political repression is there then uh, things are getting expensive basically inflation is rising accompanied by this 
rising cost of borrowing so business as well as uh, private business as well as private citizens they are facing many hardship in egypt and uh, uh, then you find this sort of examples as well that uh, 2017 acquittal of mr mubarak right he was uh, acquitted from all the charges so you can say in uh, sort of influence of uh, this political or political setup in in the functioning of judiciary then you have this lengthy sentences were slapped on those who opposed this Mohammad Mursi as president in 2013. So, these are the things. Now, if you go back to the history of Egypt, then you find that it used to be a very strong country in this Arabic world, and uh, it used to be it used to be a shining example for other Arabic countries as well. And uh, this is something that uh, they should strive for because it will impact the whole region, the, the outcome of Egypt or its political stability as well as prosperity. Uh, will be beneficial for the whole region and for the whole world moving on to another item this is about shedding the crisis state this is basically about a book that is written by uh, hussein Hakani, who is a public intellectual as well as former diplomat he is living in exile that means he is not living in pakistan he is living abroad because of various reasons now, uh, the name of this book is Reimagining Pakistan, Transforming a Dysfunctional Nuclear State. Now, of course, we know that Pakistan is a nuclear state. And what we have seen for a very long period of time is that these politicians or leaders in Pakistan, may it be army or may it be political parties, they have always said that we are under threat. Uh, we are, we will be, will be taken over by India or will be attacked by India and things uh, things like that and they have always used this fear they have always exploited uh, they have basically i can say they have uh, successfully sold this fear for a very long period of time and they have been selling it at present as well so because of this all things uh, what they are saying is that uh, they need more strong army they need more this is the reason why they are supporting this different terrorist groups and things like that this is a sort of excuse that is provided by uh, leadership in Pakistan but this is becoming more and more detrimental for the Pakistan itself because around the world you know the image of Pakistan is very bad right it is considered as a dangerous as well as a terror breeding ground country it is uh, also suffering from this uh, stagnant economy population is rapidly growing then you have this other institutions that are failed or many a times you have this radical uh, radical people right uh, radical islamic uh, people are influencing this important institutions of pakistan now china of course is supporting pakistan for a very long period of time but this is not going to last forever because china itself has uh, started suffering from this uyghur group who are a jihadist group they get all this ideology direction and other sort of support from from pakistani based groups uh, then you know it very well usa mr trump is very hard or harsh on pakistan western world as well is not happy you know france and other countries are now are now basically against pakistan because uh, you go anywhere you will find you know, roots when it comes to terrorism you will find some sort of connection uh, leading you to pakistan so this is a big problem for pakistan and it's not that the people of pakistan are bad right uh, in any society you will find good people and bad people if you meet people of pakistan who are not living in pakistan they are very much shameful of the things uh, all the things that are going on in pakistan there are many people who are leaving pakistan for this sort of reasons as well because of all these dirty games that are going on and people in pakistan are suffering as well we have seen many a times the small kids nearly 200 plus kids were attacked in a school a couple of years ago and there are many other things that are going on in pakistan so what pakistan can do and this book is providing some suggestions that rather than viewing itself as a warrior nation it should uh, change itself or it should view itself as a trading nation because it has a very good location in terms of transshipment route uh, it is there in arabic sea you know on the other side you have this just north to it you have access to uh, central asia directly to moscow we are talking about international north south uh, north uh, south trade corridor and uh, it can help in other routes as well uh, pakistan can uh, 
can become a sort of country that will provide good connection for oil and gas pipelines to India and other countries. Uh, it can it can become a major trading partner because of uh, you can say closeness or proximity in terms of culture. There are many products that we produce here and that can be sold. Like tea is a very good example because we have a bad relationship with Pakistan uh, or Pakistan is not importing tea from us. It is importing from Kenya and other countries and they know very well that our tea quality is quite good. They are paying a bit extra money over there and we are losing a big market because Pakistan is um, is loving its cup of tea just like we do in our country. So it can become a major trading partner but for that it has to change and I believe that it is this revolution that will be started by people in Pakistan. Only then you can expect a sort of change in Pakistan. Now here you find a very that's everything as far as articles are concerned. This one is a sort of uh, page that you or, or a, an image that you find in this op-ed page and it is about this stagnant water right bad water and how it can create a difference. So it becomes a breeding ground for many insects and other things and then you have these diseases or this flus and other things. So here you can see, right, Maharashtra is in very bad state. Parts of West Bengal and other uh, cities are here. So just to have a quick glance over it, uh, moving on to another items, news items, uh, important news items. You have this ISRO recently launched this uh, GSAT 6A. It was successfully launched, but uh, we have some technical problems here. Communication has failed and uh, ISRO's uh, chief has said that he is hopeful that uh, things will be sorted out uh, very soon. So. Let's hope that uh, it is sorted out. This uh, satellite will provide or will boost military communication and mobile based communication and we need that because it eventually kicks up our economy as well. Uh, CBSC paper leak 3 uh, arrested and you find youngsters 26, 26, 26 right. Uh, these are the three youngsters, teachers who are arrested so this is a very again a sad thing cvc wants to keep an eye on private banks cvc has said or requested prime minister to to allow uh, cvc to a central vigilance commission to allow it to go through or to check or keep an eye on these private banks as well because many private banks are indulged in many bad practices as per cvc now let me tell you some important things regarding private banks that private banks are being looked after by or audited by RBI, right? Uh, it is not under the purview or out of uh, the CVC's purview, but now CVC wants to keep an eye on it. 12 militants are killed in multiple operations in Kashmir. Sadly, we have lost three soldiers and four civilians as well. Now, uh, this 15th Finance Commission that will uh, come into existence uh, from 2020. Uh, there are many, you can say, uh, I would say request uh, or there are many things uh, that are been been flagged by different people. You have Sarat Pawar. He said that uh, uh, this uh, division of North means giving more money to Northeastern states and other things. He has also talked about this creating some buffer against financial buffer against this crude oil price and other uh, funds for floods and other things. You have uh, Nitish Kumar, who is chief minister of Bihar. He has said that this three percent target of fiscal deficit, this 14th Finance Commission batted for this 3% target of fiscal deficit. Now, Bihar Chief Minister has said that this is not possible. It, it's not practical for a poor or a struggling state. Uh, then you have a request from this Thivendra Singh Rathod, uh, Rawat basically. He has uh, said that hilly states uh, should be allocated more. And then you have demands from other states as well. Now, bodies are going to arrive from Mosul today. And diesel prices uh, as well, diesel as well as petrol, get, uh, oil prices have gone up 64.58 and uh, petrol is 73.773, which is very expensive, right? Uh, no doubt. And it will kick inflation as well. International news, you have two important ones. Kim Jong-un, a uh, North Korean dictator, he attended a concert that was uh, a concert in which uh, uh, they saw this uh, South Korean performer. So this is a good thing uh, after, you know, in recent past, we have seen a bit of soft stand by Kim Jong. Then we have this expelled Russian diplomats. Uh, they have arrived in Moscow. Eve bill uh, comes into existence uh, from April 1st. That is yesterday. And uh, 
uh, 1.7 lakh e-way bills were generated yesterday it is for this interstate uh, movement of goods e-way bill you will require for interstate movement of goods and uh, let's see uh, let's wait and watch because it would be very early uh, to say whether this thing is successful or not uh, this uh, aramco aramco is a big company of saudi arabia oil giant of saudi arabia and it wants to set up a sort of refinery big refinery biggest in the world in our country so india has said that we are open for uh, this thing about normal summer has been said by imd it is going to be bit hot extra hot in uh, some parts of our country we have talked about it in detail in pib and uh, here you have a valong tri-junction here it is this is your valong tri-junction here where you have china myanmar and india so we don't want a situation like Doklam here, so we have intensified our vigilance over here. This is a picture or cartoon. What do you make of this thing? And uh, this, uh, this is your answer, your two new questions. And that's everything in today's discussion, dear friends. Uh, don't forget to check out studyiq.com. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have subscribed, then hit the notification bell. As I told you, I will share this PDF on my Facebook page, on our Telegram channel. I will share it on my Twitter as well. I will pass you my Twitter account in uh, tomorrow's uh, lecture slide i will give you this account name just uh, tomorrow and uh, uh, please uh, give us your like if you have learned something out of today's discussion and pass your valuable comments and your answers enjoy your day jai hind